Hi, this is Nanook Burt. I'm not an Alaska, or am I? Well, I lived in Alaska in 1978, and with the recent popularity of an Alaskan governor, Sarah Palin, there are many things about Alaska you probably ought to know about. So I'm going to spend some time with you to take you back to 1978, and then we're going to move up to 2003 when I visited Alaska again with my daughter April, and we'll take another look at that area. One of the areas I lived in was an area called Kotzebue, Alaska. I also used ham radio up there, and that was a little unusual too, because I had put up a dipole antenna about 20 feet above ground. But by the time the middle of the winter came around, the dipole wasn't above ground anymore. The snow had risen to it. So I hope you enjoy this time in Alaska. I lived in Kotzebue, Alaska, which is 187 miles north of Nome, just above the Arctic Circle. There are a number of very unusual things that you had to experience in the Arctic. For example, if you told your kids to go out to play and not to come home until dark, if you did this in the summertime, you might not see your kids for several weeks because it doesn't get dark. In Kotzebue, the sun would come up approximately in early May and you wouldn't see nighttime until the mid part of August. Air service. You would think a community of 3,000 people would have these little planes that come in, but Kotzebue had 737 jet service coming in because basically that's one of the few ways they, they got all their supplies. The town had a lot of garbage uh, all over the place. The community is 90% Eskimo. As far as graves were concerned, you couldn't dig too many graves in the winter because the ground was frozen 250 feet from the surface. So you had to wait until the summer to dig any graves. And of course, anybody that was buried, if you dig them up 50 years later, they basically look still the same. Alcoholism was a big problem in Alaska because you had this problem with cabin fever in the wintertime and quite a few uh, suicides. Telephone service in the late 70s was a little unusual. It was almost like talking on a two-way radio because your telephone service going to what was known as outside, was what Alaskans referred to as the lower 48, was delayed because every call had to go up, up to a couple of satellites and by the time it got down to the lower 48, uh, it, it was almost like talking on ham radio because you had to wait for the other person to respond. Remember once coming back from a supermarket, was listening to the radio, and all of a sudden the radio stopped. As it turned out, the radio froze, the battery froze. And had bought uh, ground beef at the supermarket, which was not frozen, but by the time I walked home, it was frozen. One of the biggest things about the Alaskan area was they had quite a few different religious sects. Uh, Mormons were very big, but you can spot them coming from a mile away because they were all dressed up in suits. And in Alaska, a suit really stands out. In 1978, on KOTZ, we had this program called Tundra Telegraph, and in fact, it still exists today. And I remember, I remember airing a message that said to Debbie out in Norvik, your rabbit died. So everyone in the listening area of KOTZ knew that this young woman was pregnant. And at KOTZ, I don't know if you're familiar with ratings, but radio stations and television stations are rated at, on a share they have of the market. K KOTZ had a 100% share, which, was a, which would be a dream for any radio station. And of course the reason they had a 100% share, they had the entire market because there was no other radio station that anybody could hear. In some cases there wasn't a bathroom, there was something called a honey bucket. And I remember going up to Point Hope, getting sick on the way up, flying up, and then needing to use the bathroom and then deciding otherwise as when the bathroom turned out to be just to kneel over a bucket that was brim full with, well, I guess you have an idea what it was. Uh, generally, uh, washing machines, uh, when they broke, no one could fix them, so you generally saw them out in the yard. I remember taking some students to Anchorage on a in-service to some videotaping 
and as we're dri driving into Anchorage, they ordered me to stop because they wanted to see the train. They had never ever seen a train that was actually moving, and that was very interesting to them. While in Kotzebue, we saw a play called Little Abner performed by Eskimo students. It's very interesting to hear a play that's a southern play with a southern accent tried to be accented by Eskimos who have quite a different accent to begin with. Did see one plane crash up there as I was looking out my apartment window. I uh, saw a plane come down and it crashed. Uh, picked up the phone and called what was the equivalent of 911 in that era. Uh, nobody was hurt though. There was a high school dress up day here on Cape Cod. We have dress down day. It seemed like every day is dress down day. But every day uh, but they did have a dress up day in Kotzebue. The buses up there, you know, when I went up to Cape Cod, or when I went up to Kotzebue, I was hoping to avoid tourists. Well, they have these big white buses in the summer, and they bring around the tourists. They also show them an igloo, but the igloo isn't real. The Eskimos build the igloo just for the tourists. When you lived up in Kotzebue during 1978, we had satellite television but very little of it was live and most of it was tapes that were bussed around so if you were watching a baseball game you would see it three weeks later than when it was actually actually played and the same thing with other TV shows uh, in 1979 the Super Bowl was aired up there live one of the very few programs one of the very few times that anything was aired live up there you never had any haze or any fog and if you did have anything that was approaching fog, of course it would freeze. And the door dogs generally had beards because the temperatures were so cold when they breathed out, uh, frost formed on their fur and they had beards. Lots of you saw a lot of politicians. Uh, there, was a ma there was a guy up there called Fink. I think he later ran for governor or maybe he was mayor of uh, Anchorage. And we did get to see our share of politicians. I did meet Representative Don Young, and I think he's still in Congress, and met him back in 1978. There, well, you did have blizzards, but it doesn't have to snow when you have a blizzard, because the definition of a blizzard is blinding snow. And if the winds were pretty strong, uh, the wind would pick up uh, the snow, which was very dry, and you really couldn't tell if it was snowing. Sometimes if you look straight up, uh, you could tell. And they didn't cancel school unless you couldn't find it. I remember one day walking to the school, because I taught school, and some Eskimo yelled out to me, Hey, Fisher, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the school. He said, Well, you passed it half a mile ago. And he said, Plus, there is no school today. If you're looking for a divorce, don't go to Nevada. Go to Alaska. There is no residency requirement. I did move up there in July of 78, and I was divorced within about two months. That area of Alaska is referred to as the bush. And the area of the United States is referred to as outside. And the southeast area of Alaska, known as Juneau or Sitka, uh, that's called the banana belt because it's relatively warm. If you've never seen an aurora or a northern light, go to Alaska. They're fairly common during the summer. And guess what? They don't have fireworks on July 4th. And the reason being? It's daylight. You can't have them then. They generally have them in February. And when we were up there, there were always, uh, almost every car window was an Alaskan window, which meant that a rocket hit it and it was basically uh, broken. Cable TV and then that uh, in 1978 cost about uh, $30 a month, which was about seven times what it cost in the lower 48. One of the things about Alaska, my daughter, Samantha, her middle name happens to be Aurora. And the reason that is, is because my wife and I, we got married in Alaska, in Kotzebue, Alaska, so we gave her the middle name of Aurora. So Alaska has definitely had an impact on us. So I hope you've enjoyed this visit to Alaska. Hey, guys! Hey, man, what's this? What's happening? Well, I've got the hot hot for Cots t-shirts for the summer. Yeah, sure, we'll get one later. Don't wait for the last minute. There might not be any left. Okay, what do we do? All you do is go down to KOTZ and ask for a t-shirt. Sure, but how much are they? They're only $5.50 and they come in all sizes. 
Catch you later. See Bye you. now. See you there.